Hello, everybody. Welcome to Watches with Dennis. And it's another Saturday live stream. And it's another one where we're going to focus a lot on some new releases, including some that were actually more like two weeks old than one week old, because there was some feedback after the last episode asking, why no Zen? And it's like, well, I knew there was Zen. We actually had someone who was in the live stream bring up that they were interested in the Zen releases. And I hadn't preloaded them. I hadn't read any articles about them. I tried to find them really quickly and I failed to do so. So I was just like, I said I would bring them over to this live stream and thus I have done so. So we will go ahead and get into that. We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, Moser. Uh, Moser, I should say. Moser, H. Moser has a new uh, streamliner that we're going to talk about. We'll probably, we'll open with that one. And then we also have a couple of Bulgari watches. So actually, I think I'll do those first. Uh, and they're not in that order in the video description. There will be links to all the articles. There already are links to all the articles. So you can open up a, in a separate tab. You want to go and look at the photos or read up about the specifications and stuff. So we're going to, we actually have two articles uh, with multiple Zen watches because there are actually some U50 releases, like four of them. Uh, and then there was also a new chronograph that uh, they did um, around the same time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit on all of that. And then the time will be up and you guys will be happy or be upset. I, well, no, I'm, I don't think I'll rise to the level of upset. You'll be disappointed. And then, but you'll go about your days after that. So that is what we're going to go ahead and do. And I will get caught up on chat first, but uh, I do have uh, I, those who are in the Discord and the link to the Discord as well as the 99 Cent Club are in the video description as well. I often forget to plug the Discord lately. I used to be really good about it, but it's there if you want to chat about watches. But if you are, if you saw on the chat, either on the Discord, I put a photo up. I also did it on YouTube. I'm, I'm, I try and be good about the community posts. I don't do very many, but I did get a new watch uh, that arrived yesterday. So, and we actually talked about this watch on the last episode. It came up when we were discussing. Uh, citizen for what I can't even remember how we got to that topic, but I did pick up uh, this model of let me block it a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. But this is the citizen, one of the the citizens that's what they now call their high end uh, watch. They're not all quartz, this is this is a high accuracy quartz, and this is the one with the platinum flakes on the white paper dial um, that they came out with last year. So uh, I've been watching these for a while on eBay and on Chrono 24. There are, they're still available. You can still order them directly from Citizen, but Citizen's price on this watch is like $4,100. And you can get them easily over a thousand off of that new uh, if you're willing to import. So anyway, so I ordered off of Chrono 24 after I sent some price offers to some of the Japanese dealers and had one that agreed uh, and so I don't know how much my customs bill is yet. I haven't gotten that bill yet, but, um, anyway, so plan for a, a review on this in about a week, but it's the first high accuracy quartz watch I've ever owned. And so since I liked the dial on this one so much and I haven't owned a set, well, someone sent me over a year ago. I need to finish this video. I need to finish repairing it. Sent me an eco drive. I'd never had an eco drive and they found one in the road that someone had run over with a car. So I was working on it, but my, uh, my crystal press broke, uh, the, not the actual press, but the nylon little piece broke. So I ordered metal ones and then I never went back to try and finish the uh, recasing the watch. So other than that, I haven't had a citizen. I don't count that one cause I don't wear it, but I haven't had a citizen since my first nice watch, which, uh, I can't remember. Well, probably my mom, one of my, I was gonna say my parents, but it's probably my mom who got it for me when I was in high school. And I don't know where that was. I have that bracelet for that watch. I don't know where that watch is anymore. I haven't worn it in years after I got my Explorer 2. So anyway, finally have a Citizen again. Uh, I have had a Grand Seiko spring drive, but I was more interested in like when we're talking just pure high accuracy quartz, uh, what Citizen's doing more so than Grand Seiko. But your mileage may vary and Grand Seiko definitely gets a far, or far more attention in that space. But I'd say if you're willing to have Citizen say on the dial, Kind of like how Grand Seiko used to say Seiko and then Grand Seiko. Um, it may be a line worth looking at. But let me get caught up with the chat. So good morning, Matthew. And thank you for being a 99 Cent Club member. Kevin, you weren't the first person to say good morning. You were the second. You've you've slipped you've slipped in status. But good morning to you as well. And Pritu, you've been making a lot of the live streams lately. Yes, Zen is going to be the back half of the episode. A brand that I want to like and have struggled mightily to find a design I can get into. 
Maybe that's been resolved at this point. We will get to that in a little bit. Frank as well, been pretty frequent to these live streams. Hello, glad you could make it. And Tuna, hi, welcome. And Koji, both also 99 cent club members, which I always appreciate because those dollars go towards me paying these customs fees for these citizen watches. So that's always very, very helpful. And thank you, yes, the dial. Uh, there's a, I'm sure you, you've probably read about it already, Koji, because I think you knew about these watches, but they do some process to spring. They have another version that, uh, is, that looks gold and has gold flakes. Uh, they, so the bracelet here, this is not platinum. This is one of their Duratect protections. That's platinum in color. They have it in gold and they have a few others that they have done. And that's their hardening that they put on the exterior. This is a titanium watch. So it's very, very light. They do use actual platinum on the dial, but they just sort of sprinkle it and somehow embed it into the paper. It's some, I don't know, it's some Japanese technique. They've done it with a gold version that came out before this, but both of those watches, I think, dropped in 2023. I know this one did. I think the gold one did as well. Uh, this is a limited run of 500, but as I noted, especially as, as expensive as Citizen listed it, and it's Citizen and expensive, which is not something people are used to, they are readily available new in box uh, from dealers, and Citizen's website itself does still carry it. So what do you win, Matthew? You you won those accolades. Did you not hear my verbal accolading? The, it was very accolady. I'll, I'll tell you what, you can, if you, I have emojis, all right? You're a 99 Cent Club member, so you get to use channel emojis. You can come up, this is what I'll let you have, Matthew. You can come up with a new channel emoji. I've got plenty that no one ever uses. I'm keeping the clown with the brick because everyone loves the clown with the brick. It's the most used one. And then uh, we have a more recent one that is making fun of the the uh, AP dead girl in lawn chair. So we got to keep those two. But I've got plenty of others that just like aren't ever used. And I can actually, I don't know if I'm allowed to have a new one yet. I think we'd need one more 99 cent club member to unlock another emoji. But I can take an old emoji and trash bin it and put in a new emoji. So think about an emoji you want, Matthew, and I will try and mock it up and see if we can get it to a place that you enjoy. Uh, Tuna, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. I should have a review out hopefully in about a week, you know, like I usually do after I wear them for a while. And Neff, uh, thank you as well. I appreciate it. And thank you for being a 99 cent club member. And it's funny because I use StreamYards, uh, StreamYard. So here you see, if I show this, I'm sure in the chat, you actually saw all of those, but here is what I actually see in the actual program I'm using to talk. So I just see all the little, uh, the little breakdown codes to it. But if I, I keep a separate window open so I can actually see what the live stream sees and create. Um, so the, the first one that Neff showed and the second to last one, those are locked in, but we could probably get rid of like the Mudmaster one or the uh, EGP one, something like that. So anyway, there's plenty of sacrificial lumps. You don't have to worry, Matthew, about which one to get rid of. I'll choose that. But you can come up with a, an emoji and we will, as long as it's, it's clean enough for YouTube, we will see about working it in. Just uh, Neff was very helpful there because they are very small. So you have to think super simple things that are easily recognizable at a distance. So... Speaking of easily recognizable at a distance, what a great segue. I'm very proud of that. That's going to be my best one today. We're going to go ahead. We're going to do the Zins last because that's what you all care about. So I'm going to make you wait. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with Moser first. So, and I'm going to go, I'm just going to upfront admit like this is my least favorite watch of all the ones we're going to talk about today. The Streamliner is not, ugh, all right. I've struggled with a lot of integrated sports watches, just like having them really resume, resonate with me. But the uh, but the streamliner, it's okay. I, I like that it doesn't feel like a Genta design. But like this, this does nothing for me. But I think we should probably talk a little bit about it first. Okay, so this is a perpetual calendar uh, watch. Uh, first off, they call it smoked salmon, which, okay, I guess because it, it's smoked. But it looks, I've seen this happen with you know, like champagne dials, salmon dials, and so on and so forth. Like there's a big range on the colors. This is brown to me. And I prefer, sa I, I've never owned a salmon a colored dial, but I do like them. But I like them to be pinker, not browner. Uh, so I don't really love this brown color. And anyway, it's a perpetual calendar. So you're probably, probably noticing a few hands here and you can't tell what they're doing can't tell what they're doing because there's no markers, which is something I know Moser is fond of doing with a number of their watches. And that is why I just cannot, I cannot get behind them, but let's go ahead and, and blow this up a little bit. The link uh, to the article is in the video description. This is obviously a blog to watch. All right. Hour hand, minute hand, second hand here at the four o'clock is the date window. 
This, it's hard to see, this little hand, this is the month indicator. So we're looking at, I assume, January, but that's going to tick over in the 12-hour positions to represent the 12 months. Power reserve. I don't know the power reserve is charged further down or charged further up. You'd have to like wind the watch and find out. I don't know because you can't tell, but that's what it is, is a power reserve indicator. Now, because it's a perpetual calendar, it does have leap year capability. Well, I mean, incidentally, this citizen has, uh, with its quartz movement, is a perpetual calendar. The way it denotes leap year, it doesn't show it to you. The only way, it, there's a way you can tell by pushing a button to see whether what, what year you're in in terms of the leap year cycle. But what it does is like this year, it will go to the 29th on the on the dial and then it will just jump to the first. So that's how Citizen does it here, though. You know, in a lot of these mechanical perpetual calendars, people want to be able to see what leap year it is. That's where the movement is. Now, I do like this movement uh, uh, look quite a bit. It's very modern. Like we got the PVD coding, which Moser, Moser does a great PVD coding. I have a I have a PVD pioneer on the case, and it it, it looks very nice. And I I kind of a fan of black PVD anyway. Uh, but you still have like some striping and stuff, so you've got like a mix of old and new technology here. But here it is, this little star wheel. That's what indicates the leap year. So there's one aspect of the perpetual calendar that is actually on the back of the watch. I'm not sure if a blog to watch has a close up of that. Uh, perpetual feature any more so than what I just showed you. That's why I'm jumping through these photos. But anyway, so that's this. It's a concept watch. So I think that means it's limited to production. I think they're only, I don't think it's a limited number. I think they said they're limiting it, it to only being built in 2024 and then they're done. And it's just under 55,000 US dollars, 54,900. So go ahead and there, let you see the, uh, this is the best shot with the zoom in a bit there we go i'll just zoom in for you guys there you go so uh, there's the you can see the wheel better that tells you what uh what leap year it is so love the movement um this isn't too thick i don't th i think they said 11 um 11 millimeters but that didn't include the crystal so moser tends to like to dome their crystals quite a bit so i'm a little skeptical that this is going to be a svelte where and svelte the right word to use i don't know we're going to use it um because this is on their bigger side, their new, I mean, Moser tends to have bigger watches. So it's 42.3 millimeters in diameter. The 11 millimeters thick is great. Uh, but again, with the crystal, it might be closer to 13 or so because it's domed like they always like to do. 120 meters of water resistance, which is pretty standard for a, a lot of their watches that they do. And 2.5 hertz movement, which I thought was kind of interesting because most of their movements, I think, are three hertz. But anyway, that's what they've got going. It doesn't work for me. Uh, but uh, if you love it, there you go. I mean, I guess price-wise for a perpetual calendar mechanical in steel, it's not ridiculous, but I just, you can't easily, like, look at this. You can't easily read this. And that's where I've, I've struggled with every Moser watch that doesn't put markings on the, I, like, I don't need every minute marked, but I do like to have the hours marked. And I just find it extra weird to have a, uh, have a perpetual calendar. And then be like, okay, well, I hope you remember. Like, so, so you're going to be going like January, February, March, April, assuming the 12 isn't December. I don't, I don't remember. I assume not. I think it's more logical to have the 12 noon be January. But anyway, it's, I mean, it, so that's why it doesn't work for me. But anyway, let's go ahead and catch up on chat while you go and look at, uh, sorry, I should say, continue to just stare at this image that I've thrown up on the screen. Pre to back on the my discussion with Matthew and getting to pick an emoji once a Ben Climber, uh, Climber, I think that's how I say his name, the Hodinky guy emoji. <laughs> Maybe they already have one over there. Uh, I don't know, I don't know the rules. Uh, Neff says, I am not a fan of the streamliner and that is not salmon. It's smoked salmon. Neff, it's been cooked. It's been cooked too. And that's the thing where I've had smoked salmon before. I don't eat salmon very much, but even most cooked salmon is still pretty pink. So I don't know. I think that's, I agree. I don't like it. I guess that's the best way to say it. I don't really like it. Uh, T looks welcome to live stream again, by the way, uh, any talk of what the new tutors will be this year? Um, I haven't heard a lot out of the rumor mill other than uh, there is an expectation that we may see more color dial color iterations on the Pelagos. Uh, that there's some room there. Basically, if you look at what they've done with the Black Bay, that they might start doing similar to the Pelagos. 
that's been the main thing that I've heard uh, stemming stemming from the the rumor mill. Uh, so th- that's it. In terms of exciting Tudor rumors, like something really dramatic, uh, not, no, not really. Uh, there's always this like perpetual hope that uh, they'll come out with the old uh, like Tudor Submariner. Uh, but I don't, I don't think that Rolex is keen on that. Uh, so I, I think they're, they're avoiding it for a reason. And that's why the black base, their heritage line. So that's kind of the, that's kind of where I think it is. 1970s tan. That's uh, that's Tuna's interpretation of their interpretation of smoked salmon. Uh, reasonable. This vertical striping, I think has to do, I think in the article, it notes this, that it has to do with, that's what they do with all their concept and only their concept watches. So, but it does kind of give me, now that you mentioned 1970s tan, that very wood grain, faux wood grain vibe. If any of you grew up in the 70s or had furniture from the 70s or like early 80s VCRs and stuff. I mean, the Atari 2600, I had a black one, but they had the fake wood grain one. That's what this reminds me. This would be right at home on one of those wood grain uh, countertops. Useless dial, says Nep. I think the dial would be quasi useful once I know what way the power reserve indicator works. I, I could remember that and I could remember the date, obviously, because it's pretty obvious here. The rest of it, uh, I don't really care for. Yes, you get a we all know because we know how to read clocks, a vague hour and minute uh, thing with this. But I, again, I'm in no way surprised Moser would do this. They've done this on a lot of other watches. I just think it's, I get it. They like to be edgy. And I'll say it's edgy to make a perpetual calendar where all the perpetual parts are basically uninterpretable. But that's the way they like to work. Hey, they made a watch out of cheese once. Don't forget about the watch out of cheese. Koji says it see, it's both seems strange and ultra minimalist just for the sake of it and a bit pretentious. Um, I agree. And this is where I, I struggle with like, so Moser has plenty of watches, like, you know, some of the pioneers and stuff that I really like. I really like a lot. I think they make very excellent watches. And I also really respect how they want, like they don't put Swiss made on the dial because the logo means nothing. And they want to focus on being ultra Swiss made. This is like, uh, you know, the uh, what Shapiro and wanting to make an all USA made watch. Like I respect the idea of, of wanting to try and do it all in a particular place. Very, very cool. But they also then they do things like that. The Bitcoin or the NFT, the NFT watch, which was just stupid. And uh, a lot of these things that are so fashion forward that they kind of lose sight of the of the horology of being able to tell the time, but I still respect the movements. So there's like half the long story short, there's like half the Moser catalog that annoys me and I don't like it because it's, it's almost that art for art's sake. And I, which is fine, but it almost to me feels like in some instances they're being deliberately ridiculous at this point. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the vibe I get. And I don't care for that vibe, but they make plenty of other practical products that I can get behind. So, yeah, it's just a weird mix for me with Moser is Moser. They're going to do Moser stuff. So Tuna says beautiful watches, but the streamliner model is a bit meh. I I credit its uniqueness, but like I'd much rather have a, a, gosh, I was going to say a Chapek. Well, yeah, Chapek Antarctique or uh, even though it it feels a little more derivative, the uh, Chopard, uh, Chopard's um, Alpine Eagle line. I like those designs much better than this. Koji does acknowledge that the movement is nice. And Matthew, kind of in that same vein, noting preferring the back to the front. Aravinda is here. Welcome to the live stream again, by the way. Last time I actually asked about studying horology as a major in college, like what step? Yes. And I think I've replied to that uh, comment after the fact. So you should have a reply on last week's uh, video about that. Speaking of which, I don't have a, uh, I wasn't going to talk about this on this episode, but there were a couple of articles I saw that came out that, the uh, that Rolex is opening a free watch training course center thing out in, in Texas, USA. So you it's free. You can go and you can get your you can get your watchmaker certification, and then they'll also help place you at Rolex to start uh, working on watches because they need they need more watchmakers. So they're like, okay, we'll just we'll underwrite it. So as an FYI, I mean, there's there's that option if you're if one's willing to, and I believe they're even stipends so people can live. Uh, in the city while they uh, complete the education, which uh, it, it's you can tell how dire it must be for a company to go ahead and say, we're going to subsidize the entire education experience. We just desperately need watchmakers. 
Uh, so anyway, just as an FYI, because uh, most of Rolex's watches aren't particularly complex, but most watches aren't particularly complex. So anyway, I thought it was a very neat thing. And it, it did remind me of your question about, you know, majoring in horology. I don't know how many universities have horological programs because at least here in the States, uh, watchmaking is more of a trade. It's like a, it's kind of like a white collar versus blue collar. And so we have certain professions in the U S that tend to go to trade schools like plumbing and electricians and stuff. So those like manual, uh, highly skilled manual working things, they're not often housed at universities are often housed in their own or in collective trade school, uh, programs because it's just a different, like they don't, they don't need to get a bunch of liberal arts education, uh, because they're not going into management. They need to learn how to pipe fit and stuff. And it's just different education. So, so anyway, uh, but FYI, Rolex in Texas doing something there. Neff says, I don't mind Moser's concept dials when it's time only, but add functions. And it reminds me too much of the dead girl AP. Yes. The Alex AP. We kind of call it by its proper name, kind of, because there's like numbers as well. And Neff is knowing that the smoked salmon dial, which I will throw back up here, has been burnt to a crisp. DP, welcome, DP, uh, to the live stream. Yeah, the 1 p.m. starts the January month. Uh, agree, this one would be hard to read. Oh, okay, so it's the one, a one o'clock position that would be, okay, so I was wrong. That's unfortunate because my mind doesn't want to read it that way, but but uh, on the plus side, I'm not planning to spend the $45,000 on it, so I'll, I'll, I'll survive somehow, but thank you for uh, for checking on that. Uh, Tuna says salmon makes me feel ill. I'm assuming you mean actually eating salmon. If you mean all salmon dials, you've probably had to avoid a lot of watch news sites for the last six years. Neff says I'd buy a green Black Bay 58 if Tudor made one. I haven't heard any rumors on if they're going to do that or not. Pretus asks the question, calling this smoked salmon is puzzling. Is that more desirable than just brown? Is fresh tilapia next? <laughs> Okay. I do think that calling it uh, smoked salmon is seen as more desirable than brown. Because I think when you say brown, people instinctively think dirt. But I'm maybe that's just me. Arvinda says, I suggested Addy's Dive Automatic for my friend as it has a Grand Seiko level dial and an NH35, then a Sapphire Crystal through a Chinese brand. So I kind of, I think it's kind of better. Uh, you know, it, yeah, it depends. I like I'm not as hung up uh, as a, just as an aside while we're talking about watches, which is what we do here. doesn't have to be stay on the, on the article topics. Um, I'm not as hung up as some people are about the Sapphire uh, dial thing, especially on, uh, on less expensive watches. And I, I almost said sub 1000, but more sub 500, I would say, um, you know, it just, it just sort of depends. Uh, the movement thing. Yeah. It's generally, I would just check on, on move, again, on, on lower cost watches, I just want the movement to be robust. Uh, and if it's simple enough, I can regulate it myself. So, and I've regulated my Orient. I had a Vostok, I regulated it. They're not that, those are pretty simple to regulate. You just look at some guides. In fact, I think I have some, I have a couple of video guides on both of those if you want to see how I did it. Um, because those don't require screwdrivers or anything once you're in. You can just use some peg wood or toothpick if you prefer. And then there's just a needle you move and you can regulate. So that's kind of what I, I look at more is if you really want it accurate, as long as you can get into it and, and mess with it yourself. Um, I, I'm pretty open to any of the movements. I don't really care where they where they stem from. NH35 is a pretty respected one uh, on, on the more budget friendly models though. So I've heard good things. I don't think I've ever owned an NH35 myself might have a, basically the equivalent to it in my Seiko. Cause you know, they brand them a little differently in house, but just one of those things. Um, Tuna says that Eddie's dive has been noted as good value. Streamliner is not as all, uh, not all the unique when you compare it to an Ike, Ike pod. I don't know what an Ike pod is Neff, but, um, interesting. And okay, and Matthew's confirming it's eighteen hundred dollars U.S. a month. Uh, if that's for the Rolex school as the stipend. Okay, so let's go ahead and I will see the rest of you guys are having a discussion in the chat, which is great, and I will let you continue to do that while I hop over to the next article piece. Another ultra expensive watch, one, um, but more than the Moser? Uh, no, I do not think so. We got a couple. Of, we're Bulgari, right? All right, this is a brand I've never even tried on, but. Hey, we talked about salmon, kind of, right? We kind of talked about this type of salmon. And now we can talk about this type of salmon. 
this is much more of what I think of with actual salmon. Or I don't even know if Bulgari called the salmon. What did they call it? I don't know. But anyway, these are the a uh, couple new uh, Bulgari Octofenissimos, the automatic Octofenissimos. So these are very thin watches, uh, which is why I would like to try one on at some point because I've heard a ton of people say that the Finissimo does not fit well on, on a lot of wrist shapes. And I'm just curious whether it would fit well on me or not. I'm not sure I actually like the design shape. Or, excuse me. I'm not sure I would like to wear the shape. I do like the look of it. I'm not, I'm not sure it would be like a, I'm not sure it's a dentist watch uh, at all, but, but I think it's interesting. So anyway, I do like how thin they are. So anyway, we've got a gold version with blue which you can see here currently on the screen. And then we also have a stainless steel model that is in what I would have called salmon. Now, I was going to check to see what they went ahead and called these. Uh, now, one of the things I thought was interesting about the gold one, it's actually in yellow gold, which seems to be coming somewhat more popular again uh, after going, I felt like yellow gold, I really ever since VC dropped Vacheron, dropped the new 222, it feels like other watch brands are leaning into the yellow gold again. Excuse me, which I I like in smaller watches. Uh, so of course we talked about Polo's, uh, excuse me, Piaget's new Polo watch um, that was very much '70s inspired. That's in yellow gold. So you've got that here. But I think more people are going to be interested if for for affordability of no other reason in the stainless steel model, which I must admit, in a lot of ways, may be the more attractive watch anyway. I think you you can appreciate the brushing a little bit better. Um, I think the radiant dial, of course, we're zoomed in more here than we were on the blue. The blue looks really good, I got to admit. But um, these are 40 millimeter watches and they're very thin. They're like six and a half millimeters thick. So that's where the Finissimo comes in. But with that, it's hard to describe how thin that is. Uh, that's like probably almost half the, the size of my thinnest watch I think I currently own. Um, platinum rotor movements on both, I believe. Uh, Pretty, uh, you know, it's an attractive movement, uh, you know, standard Geneva uh, striping, uh, and it's mostly bridge work because, again, it's uh, it's an automatic, but they do wedge in an, uh, a micro rotor into that build to get it all as thin as they can. So overall, I actually like the look of both of these. I don't know if I would like how they wear. Um, sunbrushed metallic salmon. Okay, that's what they they are calling this version. Sunbrushed. Metallic salmon. I don't care what the other one is. The other one is yellow gold with blue. I think we can we can all agree on that. So I actually like this dial look quite a bit. I like that it's a little uh, creative with going with this sort of 730 position uh, small seconds. Price-wise, these are, of course, very expensive. These are not limited. You'll see some references to limited in the article, which again is linked in the video description. That is about some models that came out. These are that these are vaguely similar to like they had a gold version without the blue dial at one point and they have another version that had some sort of copper dial i don't know how different it looks uh to this metallic salmon dial so there's some discussion about those aspects to it the gold version it's forty five thousand five hundred dollars if we hop back over to the moser that's fifty four thousand nine hundred so you can get instead of a perpetual calendar you can get a time only gold watch for about 10 grand less or if you want to go ahead and get the salmon one, it's 13,500 US. No limits as I noted. So let me go ahead and uh, and get caught up with some of this discussion because I see you guys have been busy. I'll skip some of the QC discussion you are all having on movements. Uh, Neff says, now that's a good salmon dial. Fresh caught salmon. That's right. Or as we say in the Phantom Menace, now that's pod racing, right? This is the, I don't know. And that probably doesn't work. Tony, welcome to the live stream. I am not a fan of that case shape at all. It's easily quite polarizing. It's squares within circles within, I don't know what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, within octagon. It's like, so it's, it's like the turducken of watches. It's an octagon inside of a circle inside of a square. So I could see why you might find that somewhat polarizing. I mean, we're one triangle away of all the, from all the major shapes. So... Uh, yeah. Uh, again, I've heard a lot of people cannot wear like it doesn't wear well. That's why it, it, I would advise because I have no experience with it myself. So this is all third party, all secondhand, all however distance you want to say it. Try one of these on before you just go buy an Octofinissima or make sure you know the return policy if you're ordering it. 
Uh, I have no idea if I even live near a Bulgari, Bulgari uh, distributor. Uh, I've never looked. <laughs> I've never been interested enough in it. But anyway, I thought, especially since I saw the Moser first, we this salmon dial alone warranted us bringing it up on this particular live stream. Aravinda says, I already added that regulating video to my watch my watch list when I watched your last stream. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, remember, I tried to remember to record those because I... When I needed to regulate, I mostly had to go off of still photos. So that's what I did. Uh, Tuna says, true, Dennis. In the real world, they say that the Octo is not such a great fit. The Octo Finissimo, I need to be specific, because I think they have some other Octo line watches that aren't the ultra thins, and I haven't heard the same complaint about the wearability. Scott, welcome to the live stream. If I hadn't said hello yet, because I think this might be your first post currently. And uh, also, for, thank you for being a 99 cent club member. I tried the Octo on at the authorized dealer. They look beautiful, but I wasn't a fan of how it wore. And you are, I've heard some other uh, watch podcasters who have, who have mentioned, uh, mentioned that. Aravinda asks $1,800 in Rolex. It's $1,800 a month of a stipend if you go to their training school to become a watchmaker in Texas in the United States. I forget which city it is in Texas. Dallas, maybe? I would guess Dallas. That's kind of like where all the money is in Texas. Oh, and Tuna saying hello to people. I meant to, to click on Neff's comment. Uh, very rosy yellow gold. It it When they... When I saw it, I did immediately go yellow gold. Um, maybe it's some of the brushing uh, that makes it feel a little bit softer than high polished yellow gold feels very blingy. And this like looks, other than maybe some portions of the links, this looks extremely brushed, which keeps it more subtle. And let's see. Neff says, that's more yellow looking there. Not terribly expensive for what it is. Tony goes, welcome to the squared circle. Yes, yes. And uh, Jake Brooks, welcome to live stream, by the way, Jake. Uh, in modern design and engineering with the thinness and micro rotor, it's at the forefront of modern watchmaking. Yes, I would say Bulgari might be the best known thin watchmaker at this point. Them, them and Piaget, though, I think Bulgari's been leaning into the space a lot more, or at least it feels like they're getting a lot more recognition for it than, than Piaget. But uh, Piaget still has their thin watches. They're, they're the two that I kind of think of at this point as being really big on the, on uh, we're talking ultra thin mechanical watchmaking. But we've seen other brands play around with thinness as well, uh, or lightness or size changes, all sorts of interesting sort of things. But yes, I Bulgari is who I always think of it th with thinness at this point. And Neff says, I like the Octo. I just wish they made a smaller version but they really can't. The movement is quite big. Yeah. I Now that's a, that's a plus side. We aren't whining about how the movement doesn't fill the case back uh, like we do with a lot of other watches. But of course, at these price points, the movement should be relatively snug fits into these cases, at least in my opinion. Hmm. So, all right, we've gone through the ultra expensive stuff, right guys? Let's jump to what you all really wanted to talk about. And that's Zen because I neglected to discuss them last live stream. My wrists were slapped with many a ruler for ignoring a fan favorite brand, a brand I have never owned. And as I have said on a number of videos, a brand I have struggled to get behind. Zen is my, I was going to say my German version. And I almost said of Nomos Glashuta, which is also German. Thus, maybe I just have a German problem where there are brands and I, they, they fell into a list of mine. I did this, oh gosh, maybe two years ago at this point. I had a list of brands I want to love and I can't. And Zen has always been one of them where I've struggled to get behind a number of their design choices, at least the ones I hear people talk about. And I don't know if you've ever been to Zen's website, but it might be the worst website in all of watchmaking. That website feels like it's straight out of GeoCities from the late 90s. I don't know why they don't fix it. But we're not here to complain about their website. We're actually going to talk about two Hodinkee articles. Again, links in the video description so you can go and read up on them. We're going to start with what I think is the less interesting, but I'm going to say I like the look of this watch. So in a way, uh, I wanted to talk about it anyway. And that is this new chronograph that they have come out with. This is the 103 ST. I don't know how to say this. I'm going to, so I'm going to say the letters. The 103 ST TY HD chronograph. So... It's a manual wind chronograph, so kind of getting some Omega vibes there. Uh, not that thick, though. Uh, it's it's just under 15 millimeters thick. 
Uh, 41 millimeter watch, pretty familiar uh, tri-register setup. This is a limited edition watch. Uh, they're making a thousand of them and it comes in at $2,870 US. So here's some, we gotta, we gotta get some watch porn going on. So let's look at the close up photos. Again, you can go and explore those properly uh, at Hodinkee. And I do have the link to the, to the uh, article in the video description. So I, uh, I like uh, dial designs on chronographs. Now I'm not a big chronograph person. I own all of one chronograph and that's been plenty for me. I do like the way a lot of them look if they do it in a relatively tasteful means. And so that means no uh, cropped hour numerals. Uh, I hate that on watches in general, but it's very common to do with sub dials. Uh, this watch avoids that. As you can see, they've used applied indices so that uh, that gets around that. Uh, my rule is cropped Arabic are the worst cropped uh, Roman numerals are not as annoying, but I probably I'm still at the point mentally where I would never own one. Uh, and then if you want to crop and shrink down the size of an applied indice, I'm fine with it. So anyway, so you've got that. They're, they're, they're not overlapping, which you can overlap subdials, but these are nicely, cleanly spaced, very legible, which I do like. Um, it's got the non-screw down, limited loom. Maybe that'll be an issue for some people. I don't really care about the loom on that. We close case back, so you won't be looking at the movement. It uses a Salida movement uh, for the hand wind feature. Uh, again, this is under 15 millimeters. That's with this very generously domed uh, crystal that is applied to this watch. So I was impressed at how thin, I, I don't want to imply 15 millimeters is thin. It's not. You can get, again, you'll pay a lot more, but Zenith will give you an automatic chronograph thinner than this. But part of that is going to be this, how generously domed the crystal is. I really like the uh, kind of this metallic uh, dial treatment that they've gone with with the black and i just think it's a very very clean nice looking execution and uh definitely doesn't break the bank for a mechanical chronograph with a swiss movement in it for that matter so we'll jump down to the i thought maybe there was a a spec sheet here apparently not so i just got all the numbers from the from the body of the article but anyway uh i think it looks really nice uh would i buy it probably not um i don't because I don't really see the need for another chronograph at this time. And if I, I got one, I'm not sure if I'm good with the idea of a manual wind chronograph. I've never had one. Uh, and so that would, my gut would be to buy a cheap, even cheaper one and try it out. Like maybe one with a seagull movement and see if I liked it. But uh, aesthetically, I think this, this is a very, very nice looking watch. Uh, I don't think it feels too busy. Even with the, the tachometer, I think it, it's all put together quite nicely. So anyway, those are my thoughts, but let me go ahead and see what you all think. So Scott says the hands on this model look better than some others in their catalog. And that, ooh, you get a clap, Scott. That is where I've always struggled with Zen. They, they have too much fun. I know how oh, this out. Dennis doesn't let you have fun. They, they have too much fun with their, their hands and their indices. I I've made, I think we had Patrick on one time on a live stream panel uh, from pocket watch time which you should go check out if you haven't uh, his channel. But like, I think he likes like, as I'll do a lot of people, some of the watch dials that to me feel like they're made with Lego pieces. Like they look like Lego shapes. That's what they remind me of. And I don't like that look, but a lot of people do. This is a much more traditional handset, obviously. And that's probably why, as you all who have seen my channel a number of times know, I tend to lean very conservative on designs, especially with new watches. And I may warm up to more avant-garde stuff over time. But um, I just like really, really clean looks as a general, like gut instinct sort of thing. Otherwise, you have to see if the watch will grow on me or if it won't. Tuna says, Zen is one of those brands that they rave about on the net, but I have yet to see one in the real world. And I think part of that, Tuna, is I don't, and someone please correct me, because uh, now I'm speaking way well out of turn. I don't think they have distributors. I think it's kind of like Stova, where you, if you want a Zen, you buy direct. And then your only other option is to buy used if someone's trying to get rid of their Zen. I, I don't know anyone who owns a Zen myself. Oh, excuse me. I know, I've never met up with someone I know in person and seen their Zen before. I've interacted with people on YouTube uh, who have had their Zens and have shown their Zens. You know, so I've seen and, and talked to people about their Zens. So I've had that, but I don't know anyone in the real world who lives nearby with a Zen. So I've never handled one, I guess. That's, that's a lot of words for me to say. I've just never handled one either. 
So, and that could be, you know, that's difficult. It was the same for Stova for me though. I ended up, I had to pull just, well, I have a type B fleeker from Stova and I just had to decide to pull the trigger on it and, and see if I liked it or not. And if I didn't, you know, I could take a hit and sell it used or give it away or whatever, but, and that one worked out. So, so in that regard, uh, that's great. And one thing here is, I guess I kind of wish it was, I'm not going to say kind of wish. I don't know about the strap. Now you could change the strap. So that's why this would not be a, a reason to stop me from buying it. I do think it might look better on a bracelet. Uh, I, but that's how I tend to lean with chronographs. So Neff says, I'm more of a Damasco guy myself. They are doing what Zen is, but have an in-house movement and generally are cheaper. Also have hardened cases. I'm trying to remember if Damasco was, I've looked into Damasco a little bit. I can't remember what watch model line I was looking at, but I, I have heard of them, but I'm less familiar with them than I am with, with Zen for, for obvious reasons. Zen is a darling at this point, not the bargain they once were. Kind of like Grand Seiko, I think a lot of people would argue Zen's prices are very fair, but they're not the deal they were once seen to be. Jake says, they have an exact replica of my Breitling 7806. Hard to say if it's paying homage or a ripoff. Stuff like that is difficult. Um, if it's if it's basically an exact replica, um, I'd probably say both. I mean, if something's really dated, you know, this kind of came up with one of the Messina Lab collabs where they basically did a very, very, very limited uh, model of, I can't remember, I think it was a Patek or something. They had, it was like 12 pieces. So no one ever would have the opportunity to own it. And then they, they did something and it was designed to be very faithful to it. It's kind of both. It's some homage, but, but when you basically clone something, you're, you've, you're not injecting any creativity into it. So it, it's, impossible for me not to also call it a ripoff but there's a market for that uh stuff for for a mix of reasons in that case the the messina lab case it was there's just no human way you'll never be let's i mean maybe some of you but you being me you'll never be rich enough to be able to buy this watch or you've never dumped so much of your net worth into such a watch if you could even get someone to sell you such a watch so it fills that need just like, you know, like Pagani or what Pagani design and stuff where there will be people that they will hunger so much for a Daytona, but they would never be comfortable paying that amount for a Daytona. And that, but they want, they want the look, the part that I always get to with this. And this is a question every one of you as a watch enthusiast has to ask yourself and, and answer for yourself is, do you, do you want the watch that you can't have because social media, YouTubers, podcasts, whatever, told you to love that watch? It, or is it truly somehow that's the only design you can love? And so for me, when I start to see things that are really homage like that, I don't, like if I can't have, let's say I wanted the Daytona, then I'm getting a Daytona. Let's say I couldn't, let's say I couldn't afford it or didn't want to afford it or didn't want to be on the way, whatever, doesn't matter the reason. The reason is irrelevant. I would look for other designs that I love that I could have instead. Because there's the one thing I that I think is so great about watches, unlike pinball, where there's much more limited quantity of new concepts that come out. We see so many new watches every year at so many price points that are being creative. So you can find stuff that is original or slightly inspired, slightly homage, but has its own like Chopard's Alpine Eagle. Does it look to some degree like a Royal Oak? Absolutely. Does it also have its own DNA in it? Absolutely. So I would be absolutely comfortable with buying an Alpine Eagle. You could say similar for a GP Zoriato. For me, you know, it reminds me an awful lot of AP work, but it has its own look, its own DNA aspects to it, and its own, you know, historic lineage. In that case, it just sort of came out in the same era, so people get a similar vibe to it. So I could see why people would would resonate with it, whereas I don't, but but it at least has its own uniqueness, I guess. So anyway, not to so thank you for my uh, attending my TED talk. But anyway, so those are my thoughts on that. But Neff says Zen has to be bought, but from watch buys in the U.S. As far as I can, as far as I know, Zen does not sell directly in the U.S. Or at least they used to not. And I have seen a U1 in the wild once. Quite surprising. I okay, I wasn't sure because again, their website is so clunky. I didn't know if you could order through them or what. 
Creatures confirming what Neff says, though. Yes, in the U.S., Watch Buys holds the monopoly of Zinn's distribution. No gray market available. The setup, they set up this partnership more than two decades ago. Oh, wow. I, okay. And Scott says, Zen appears to make a robust watch at a reasonable price point. Uh, too bad they aren't more accessible for U.S. consumption. Although past released, I'd love your opinion on the 144 STS anniversary too. Well, I'd have to do some research on that one to pull it up. Maybe I can get it loaded here and we can hit it after we do the next Zens. Tuna says, once I think that Zen made a, the Navitimer under license from Brightline. Okay, that, that rings a bell. And that may be where Jake's, uh, why that one is, uh, is an interesting uh, example of an homage by design. So yes. Uh, I want to say that that sounds like something that was in their history at one stage. Um, and let's see some discussion here about having the DS 30 and I love it. Super thin, unscratchable, super tough cleanness of the dials. Even the chronos usually have central seconds. All right. You guys can have your discussion on the D Damasco watches. Let's jump to the next thing. And we will uh, pre to, I have loaded up that watch. We will touch on it, but I'm going to touch on the last of the new releases first to go ahead and get that out of our discussion way. These, I think, are interesting, and I do like the looks of these. So what's happening? We're, there are actually four watches here. We're, there are three like this, and there's another one that and then it doesn't work for me so much because Lego uh, got a hold of it. But these are the new Hydro U50s by Zen. So you've got three here. You've got the, what, the stainless steel one. You've got the one that's a steel case, but the bezel has this what the tegamented black blackened bezel and then you've got the whole watch in that blackened tegamented steel look these are all oil filled and the reason why you do an oil fill in the dial space is it allows you to get a lot more depth rating out of the watch because they are oil filled these are all three quartz powered movements as well so anyway we'll get some more shots here out of the way but we're going to talk about those a little bit and the price points and then this is the other one. This is the limited edition that doesn't click so well for me, but you can see why why a lot of people will like it because if you can kind of tell from the look of this dial as I've blown it up, this is a fully loomed dial. This is a mechanical watch. So the depth rating is the typical U50s, 500 meters. The oil-filled ones are 5,000 meters. That's the power of oil filling the watches. So, and it's all in that tegamented uh, steel, kind of like one of the... Uh, prior U50s was as well. This is a limited uh, run of 500 pieces. It's using the Salita 301 um, movement. So anyway, here are your, your basic specifications right here. Again, link is in the video description. These are 41 millimeter watches, uh, just under 12 millimeters in terms of thickness. Uh, the uh, water rating, as I noted for the oil filler, the 5,000 meters. And uh, they are powered by the Ronda 715 quartz movement. So these are time plus date only watches. And then the limited edition is 11.2 millimeters thick. Uh, so it's a little bit thinner. It's about half a millimeter, or excuse me, about, about five millimeter. No, it's half a millimeter. I'm, I can't do math anymore. It's about half a millimeter thinner than the oil filled ones. Uh, same diameter though, of the 41 millimeters. And you're doing the whole German submarine steel. But this one, as I noted, is all black hardened uh, tegament coated, whereas only one of the prior ones was. And so all the rest, as I know, the 300-1 uh, Salita movement for it. So pricing on these varies. So the non-tegamented one is your cheapest option at, at starting at $2,560 US dollars. And that goes all the way up to the, um, what, 3000 uh, or $2,860 for the fully tegamented oil filled one. So just under 3000 US. It's more like $3,500 US if you want the limited edition, which you can see has this very impressive glow. I hate these markers, the Lego markers and the Lego hands. So that's why I've never clicked with the U50 by and large, because that's what I always associate with it. But as you can see with the oil filled ones, these are very, uh, you know, more traditional sword hand styles. And I like that style. I used to have a dive watch with that style. And, you know, the markers and everything else. And um, you can't really, uh, because it's completely filled with oil, you can't really see that it's got oil. My understanding is that that makes it a very interesting visual 
effect in terms of legibility under the water. So if you actually swim, these oil filled things are very, very niche and no one needs 5,000 meters of water resistance, but we don't need to talk about that. Everyone in the world is going to talk about that. But overall, I think it's a pretty impressive uh, look. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'd get the steel with a tegumented bezel. It's probably my least favorite one. Um, and you can get these with bracelets, by the way. It's not just the all tegumented one. I'd say though, because I do like the black PVD look in general, like I have Moser like that. Um, I was looking at a at a, a young Hans uh, quartz watch that's that's kind of like that. This, you know, like the black ceramic. Um, this I would probably be my pick, even though it's the most expensive of the three. Though this one uh, in all steel uh, would look good too. So favorite, second favorite, third favorite. Wouldn't buy, but Loom Loom fans are gonna like Loom fanboys are gonna eat this one up. So. Anyway, so those are those are the uh, the dive watches that Zen dropped about a week and a half ago, I guess, uh, that I actually do like the look of quite a bit. So that's kind of where where I'm at with that. Let's see. Catching up with the chat. Neff says, I think Zen also used to make cases for all long and zone. It could be wrong, but I think I heard that once. I've not. I'd never heard that, but but I have no idea. Neff continues, 5,000 meters diver under 20 millimeters thick. Who knew it could be done? Don't tell Rolex or Omega. Well, you see, I was going to, I was going to say they don't want to sink to using quartz. I don't know if you can do, I, I'm going to say you can't. Maybe there's a way that you could pull off a oil filled case with a mechanical movement and somehow prevent the oil from running into the mechanical movement and causing problems. Probably not worth the risk, quite frankly. Um, but Rolex has done quartz in the past. Obviously, oyster quartz was was a thing for quite a while. And Omega still does quartz, I believe. Maybe it's just in the, the late some of their ladies' watches. But so I was gonna say they probably think they're too good to to use this solution, but but yes, it's such an elegant, it's such an elegant way of of, of getting the depth rating up to ridiculous levels that it does feel kind of like the old, that old story about the, you know, the U S uh, in, for the, for the moon uh, the space race and the moon landing getting all that stuff ready. And so NASA invested like all this money and to develop a, a ballpoint pen, an ink pen that would work in space. And the Soviets just used a pencil sort of thing. And it'd be like, you know, sometimes the simple solution is the right solution, which does remind me Vostok and the Vostok dive watches and how they achieved their water resistance rating was with this sort of simple principle with their acrylic case, or excuse me, crystal, and how with the depth pressure increases, it expands and flattens out, providing the additional depth rating. So it gets actually more resistant the deeper you are. And that's how they were able to do it on the cheap. But people don't want to do that. They just want to make big old hockey pucks. They're all hockey fans, Neff. That's what they all are. Tuna says, they look like excellent tool watches if that is your thing. Tuna, you made it sound like it's not your thing. Why do you hate tool watches, Tuna? What's wrong? What are you? Why are you thinking? Here's my biggest complaint with these. How many fonts can you identify on this dial? That's there's no excuse. Affordability is no excuse for inconsistent fonts. So we've got this quasi script look for Zen. Then we've got this hydro between the lines, which I. I don't think the U50 is just the bolded version of these letters, but I'm not sure because the letters are all different. So maybe that's the same font and one's just a, a higher font size and thickness, but I think they're different fonts. So one, two, three, and then made in Germany is the fourth font. That's not the same font. So it's stuff like that, that we tend to see in the more affordable space, which is just goofy. Like, no, you can use multiple fonts, but it needs to be done. Like I wouldn't necessarily fault them for Zen being in one font and the rest of it being in something else. But uh, it's a minor quibble. I'd still buy the watch even with this. Uh, I want to whine about something. So that's something to help. I'm helping you out, Tuna. That's the thing. The tool watch is just, they just then like, let's just play with a bunch of different fonts. Tuna knows 5,000 meters. Not even a tuna could go that deep. Well, and survive. But the, your watch would be okay. So just think, think optimistically. Neff says, resonance uh, uses mechanical movements in oil-filled watches, but here it would negate the 5,000 meters of water resistance. Ah, 
I, you know what? I shouldn't have even forgot about resonance. I've looked at a few of those because they're very like the way the dial moves, very, very cool. And I knew those were oil filled. Um, so I should have thought about that, but I didn't. But thank you for bringing that up. Preetu says, might like the U50 professional, if not partial to the red hands. Yeah. So let's jump to the to this, the request, right? This was the request, Preetu's request that he popped up. Wanted opinions on the 144 STS anniversary too. So here we go. You now get to admire the horrid website that is Zen. I mean, guys, you see it off on the site. Look at this. This is some... This is some 1990s BS. This this is not how people want. I get it. We're in the archive. I don't care. The whole site is horrible to navigate. Absolutely horrible. I don't even think these images expand. Maybe this. Look at that. It expands in the same frame. So you can't even see what you're looking at. Dumb. This is a bad site. This makes me mad. Now I'm mad, pre two that you made me come here. It's your fault. But all right. So we're going to zoom with Chrome so you can kind of get a look. All right. So what's my opinion of this? I like this less than this, the new Zen that they came out with. Why? Unsurprisingly, the atypical tri-subdial configuration immediately puts me off. Would I grow to like it? Probably. Because it's still following most of my usual rules. The, they've integrated them in a very clean fashion. I do like that they uh, color match the, the 12 and the six o'clock subdials. And then they went with black to kind of match the color matched, which I respect as well. Uh, day date window, not a big, biggest fan of day dates. Um, I'm okay with them as long as there's no uh, Cyclops crystal on them. Cause I think the Cyclops is way too big with a day date. Uh, uh, take notes, Seiko, but they didn't do it here. So that's good. Again, we got some weird font clashing. Um, but overall, it looks fairly decent. I don't know about this on the strap. Uh, I get it with this case because of the integrated look. I would rather this be a more traditional case with a bracelet. So that would be something where I would look back at at this where I could. Obviously, this doesn't come with a bracelet, but I could equip one if I wanted. And uh, so this sort of sleek integration style, you, if the strap's good, it's fine. It looks good. I just mean like if it's comfortable because I feel like I get really limited with this style otherwise. So long story short, this new uh, this new Zen chronograph, I like better in basically every way, but this one looks decent. Um, another thing is, and this reminds me of uh, some of the Vacheron patrimony line. This, the, oh my God, I want to zoom in so bad, guys. Here, look, there, all right. I'm not a big fan of pencil hands, and that's part of what puts me off. On subdials, I'm fine with it, but uh, for for hours and minutes, I've never been a big big fan. Of, it would never stop me from buying, but the pencil handset don't care for it as much. And we still got that here too, so it's a ding on both of these. But the contrast here with the loom placement feels really good to me. Here, with it all being all white, makes it feel cheaper, uh, in, in to me. So. I mean, those would be my, th it, it looks okay, but I wouldn't buy it. Maybe that's the best way for, for me to describe it. But those are my basic thoughts. Uh, let's see. Preetu says, I actually quite like the site. Keeps the hype beast away. Preetu, but it's keeping me away and I'm not a hype beast. I'm, I'm your friendly Saturday streaming watches with Dennis host. Websites with Dennis Live Saturdays. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, you see how I'm struggling. I struggle. I'm on the struggle bus here trying to get this to look because it can't just. I'm on, I've got two monitors here. So I've got my stream yard running and I've got the websites on my other monitor. So that's when you see me point, like that's so that, that's what's going on. My, my, my struggle here is I'm trying to think about if you're watching on the phone. Can you make any of this crap out or is it just because my head's taking up? I could get rid of my face and there we can make it a little better. But then people, if they are are muted or aren't watching and just listening or I should say watching and not listening, they'd probably be they'd probably be fine with it. Honestly, it doesn't matter. But it's a live stream. So I try and keep myself present so it's clear that I'm not just recording web pages. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think, guys. It's tough for me. But that website is tough for me. Um 
Aravinda says, Vostok also uses a rubber gasket like a food cooker that expands and shrinks whenever pressure increases. But this was to solve the problems faced by the divers' watches. Uh, the rubber gets shrunken. Okay, yeah, that's right. And when I serviced mine, I had to remember to make sure I reseeded that gasket properly. Um, Scott liked the uh, like that uh, one one. Uh, I'll put it back up, even though I'm trying to avoid the website. The one four four. All right, pre two. We're not just talking about the website anymore. These names. What is with these names? The one four four STS anniversary two. I mean, thank goodness it wasn't a part of the series nine seventeen, right? I mean. Oh my gosh. Now this is an abomination. Look at how terrible this is. Oh, we found our new, we found a new ending subject. We're an hour in, so people are going to be dropping off. The rally chronograph. This is, this is ugly. Look at this. Look at how bad, look at what they've done to my boy 12 o'clock. They cropped him so bad. You almost think this is a 10. That's rough. The six, we've seen lots of cropped sixes. The, the colorful splash of power meter color. Where I add a touch of green with these massive, I forget what the name is for these, this handset type. This is very elegant. I do like that the pushers are on the other side. That's creative. Uh, the dreaded 438 window, respectively color matched, but you can tell how small this movement is as deep into the dial this this, this date window is. Do I have a picture of the movement? Surely not. They would not want you to see how small this movement is compared to this case. Wow. This is bad. This is bad. This one, this one is a no for me. It's like a mix of sporty with these elegant hands. Even the, some of the subdials have these hands. Look at this. I can't, this site is being mean. All right. I'm being mean too, but there, I can't zoom in anymore there. Look at this. Pre two. Why'd you mention this one? I know you didn't, but I'm blaming you for everything that I run into at this point. This is absolutely scary. All right. Um, Preacher says bracelet for sure. The H link, how you identify is in from across the room. Uh, Neff says this one looks better on the strap. In my opinion, very integrated look. He's not meaning this. He means the one we were talking about because he means this one has got awful. Baby Jesus has been invoked. And Preacher does acknowledge that the names are a bit much, but it is Germany. And that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And, and even Preacher admits that my random clicking has finally found a Zen. Even he can't get behind. But this one, people like this one a lot. Now, coming fresh off of the last one, I'm now ready to buy this. I'm ready to spend money as long as I don't have to. As long as I don't have to look back at that. Scott says, do we have, do we have to end on this? Yes, Scott, we do. We do have to end on this. So thank you for tuning in to watch it with Dennis. I'm glad we got to experience part of the Zen website. Maybe I should, I might do it as a panel. Maybe we should do a panel where we just go through the Zen watch archive and we use a random, like random.org, do a random generator and randomly, like I just load up these series into a list. It selects one and we go and we have a group of like three or four of us and we just talk about them. That, I think this is, I think this is something we can do. I think it's something we can do. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I will probably be back next Saturday. Be, 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 be back. Um, I don't think I have any work travel events to get in the way of it. Uh, I might have the review of the citizen out uh, by then. Not sure. Uh, usually I do about a week out. So that'll be the plan. Uh, might have, if we see some interesting announcements, I might do some pre-recorded stuff. We'll just have to wait and see on that, of course, because I don't know what's coming out yet, but until next week, at the very least, I'm Dennis. Thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to y'all on the next one.